questions for Coach Lord, raise your hand, we'll get a mic to you. Stout, and now he's here. Um, curious what he has brought to various competitions. We know he can contribute at place kicker, uh, kickoff duties. How has he shaken up the room a little bit? And, and what's kind of your timeline on, on when you're going to feel comfortable in declaring some starters at those spots? Well, obviously, you know, really, really early, only only being one day. And I, I think the number one thing that he's brought is character. You know, he's, we, we've done all the background work, or we wouldn't have brought him here to, to know what kind of person he is. Um, but first of all, it brings good character to that room, so that, that's the number one thing that's important to me. But then also the competition. You know, he's, he's a, a very good uh, kickoff guy, as, as was established at Virginia Tech last year. He was 88% touchbacks, which was 74th in the country. Uh, but he's also a really viable guy at field goals. Uh, he was in kind of a head-to-head -head competition there, and he's, and he's also a really good punter. So uh, with only one day being in, I, I really haven't, we haven't done all that, that much of that stuff yet. So. It's, it's a little bit early to say, but I know that it's, that it's pushed and motivated the other guys. Just, just like any, you know, anytime there's competition, everybody gets better. What, what I've been really proud of is, is how the other guys have, have number one, embraced him uh, and brought him into our family. And, and, and it's not always like that when you get transfers. You know, sometimes there can be some, some, uh, some tension in the room because somebody could potentially lose their job. Uh, no, no one's handled it that way. They've actually risen to the occasion. and. Uh, I thought Rafael Cheka, Jake Pinniger, we had a little competition yesterday at the end of practice, and they both, we had a little kickoff competition. They both had the best kickoffs they've had since I've been here by far. So uh, they've, they've really stepped up and embraced the challenge, and, and uh, I think that says a lot about their character and that room's character. And it, it also helped that, that Jordan's really good friends with Blake, and Blake is very well respected on our football team. So I think that made it a, a much seamless, a much more seamless transition. Uh, you know, which is, to be quite honest, something that we took in, into account when we when we decided whether or not to bring. Any any time we're going to bring into someone into the program, there's a lot of different factors that you have to look at, and one of it, one of them was how we felt it would affect that room. Uh, we felt like it would affect it positively. And so far, we're right. Timeline wise, you know, honestly, we're we're one day, and I, 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 I Coach Frank and I haven't even had that discussion. You know, it, it, there will be a whole bunch of things charted between now and then, and, and over time, you'll start to see a. a uh, you know, a trend of who's leading in this area or who's falling behind and, and put them in some different situations. Um, and there's really not much of a hurry at that position. It's, it's different than other positions where if you're, not to speak for the offense, but if you're a quarterback or something, it might be to lead that group or something. This is more of an, even though it's for the team, it's more of an individualized thing. So you can usually, in my experience, make that decision a little bit later. Joe, what have you changed regarding special teams about how the way the guys do everything, how they meet, how they practice, how they approach special teams? You know? What did I change meaning since since I got here? Yeah. Uh, well, I can't speak to what I've changed because I don't know what it was like before. So I, you know, when you when you come somewhere new, you don't really. I don't mean to sound rude, you don't really care what it was like before, but you're going to do it the way that you're going to do it. That's why you were brought somewhere. Uh, what we do is very unique. It's very different than anything that I've ever seen. Uh, and that's that we have a lot of individualized meetings. Um, and and th that probably sounds pretty basic to most people. I've never seen it anywhere. We were at the Eagles a couple months ago, and they did it like a little bit. I I've never seen it done in any way, shape, or form before. Um, but what that means is, for instance, if we're going to meet on punt, for, to give you an example, uh, usually the special teams coordinator will have the whole punt unit in there, and he'll kind of talk through everybody, and you know, the, the position coaches will be in the back and, and, uh, and listening and taking notes and those kind of things. How we do it is we break it up by position, just like you do offense and defense. So if we have a defensive meeting, there are times that Coach Pry will meet with the whole defense, but it's not the majority of the time. The majority of the time, Coach Banks is with the safeties, Coach Smith is with the corners, Coach Pry and I are with the linebackers, so on and so forth, because each position needs to hear different things. And so how we break up a majority of our meetings is positional on special teams, just like you do on offense defense. So again, back to the punt, our left guard and left tackle, they have a position coach and they meet separately and only watch the film that pertains to them. Right guard, right tackle, same thing. Snapper and punter, same thing. And so it's all broken up. Um, which I, I, I know because I know it's different because the players told me. Um, and, and it creates a lot of buy-in. It creates buy-in from, from the assistant coaches as well because they're in there coaching the position rather than listening to the special teams coordinator run the position. Uh, in my experience, when special teams are, 
are valued and when they're productive is when it's a group thing and everybody doesn't just look to the special teams guy. Obviously, I'm responsible for it, I'm accountable for it, but it's a group process. It's not about me, it's about us. Uh, hey, Coach. Hi there. Um, your return game, um, obviously, KJ was the uh, top kickoff returner for the team last year. Are, are you planning to use him in that role again? And, and how is the group of uh, players for punt return? Talk about that competition. Yeah, well, well, well KJ's a really dynamic returner in, in all phases. I think he could be, uh, will be a great punt returner also. You know, John Reed's a guy that's been back there. Uh, Matt Kippenhammer's a guy that's been back there. And then we have a variety of, of kickoff returners. You know, Micah Parsons has helped us there. Uh, all the running backs, Noah Kane, Ricky Slade, all, all those guys have been Dirty Brown. Uh, it'll really depend on. Uh, well, I like to keep track of numbers, so I want to make sure we're not over-utilizing or under-utilizing guys. You know, obviously KJ will be a, a major weapon on offense too, so it'll really be, I, I kind of liken it to like a pitcher in baseball, they have a pitch count. Uh, to me, players have rep counts, and so I'll, I'll keep track of, you know, how many times we're, a guy's on kickoff or kickoff return or pump returns, and just make sure that we're not over-utilizing or under-utilizing a guy. So. That's a long answer to your question, but basically I think KJ is really, really good. I want to make sure we don't overutilize him. I want to make sure we don't underutilize him as well. Um, and we will roll guys. It, it won't be just a, just a one person thing on kickoff return. Uh, and then the return game, it'll really be, our, we have two goals in special teams. Number one is to own the football. Number two is to have no penalties. So to make sure that, that we're putting guys on the field, um, and I'm saying this for, for punt return specifically, that are going to make great decisions. That's more important than a dynamic returner in that phase of the game because the number one thing we want to do is get the ball back to our offense. So uh, the reason I say that is it just hasn't been that established yet. We just haven't had that much time to work uh, live punts in those kind of situations. So as camp progresses, I think I'll know more of what the punt return role is going to be. Hey, Coach. Hey, oh, sorry. Yeah. So I saw that Blake Gillikin came into camp yesterday with uh, new-ish haircuts still kind of rocking the mullet. And then Jordan Stapp also has some pretty nice flow as well. So I don't want to put you on the spot, but between those two guys, who would you say has the, has the uh, better hair? I don't know if I'm a guy that should really be judging. <laughs> <laughs> I try to stay away from hair conversations. But not, my, my hair game's not the strongest. So I think they're both, I'm jealous of both of them. Um, so how you doing, first of all? Good. Um, so outside, you know, KJ and the other guys you mentioned, like John Reed, uh, Mac, uh, is there anybody else that's kind of stood out in the return game? Or? I wouldn't say so in the return game. You know, those, those are the primary guys. Again, this our stable of running backs and, and uh, Micah in the kickoff return stuff. I think I think have stood out. We we've got a bunch of different guys that, that have a lot of good speed and are explosive. Um, like I said, the, the the biggest thing that goes along with that is being great decision makers. So just continue to put them in situations in practice to evaluate that decision, those decision making processes. We have time for two more for Joe. Joe, with the uh, the situation that Brent Pry has is pretty enviable. He's got two five star signings, Brandon Smith and Lance Dixon, who are you know waiting in the wings at this point. From your perspective as a special teams coach, are you salivating on having that kind of talent? Uh, to use on your units, and, and have you ever been around a program where, as a special teams coordinator, the roster from top to bottom was this accessible with top tier talent that you could use? Um, yeah, I'm excited about the guys that you mentioned. I'm excited about about uh, all of our different guys. Are, are you saying if I've been around a place where you could utilize the players like that? I think there's well, a lot of programs, I think, in defenses would feel forced to maybe put a five star signee at that linebacker on the field on defense extensively. This program right now is not a position where it needs to do that. I know you want to maximize the talent, but not overuse the talent. So when you see guys like that, or maybe two, three deep on the roster, um, you know, does that encourage you to, to kind of tap into that talent more? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think it's but one of the things I've talked about before is is that one of the differences with special teams is sometimes people think you can put well, put you know, maybe a little bit lesser player because they don't have to do different things. The difference in special teams is there's less thinking. Right, so well, I don't have an extensive kickoff cover playbook. If I do, I'm a bad coach, right? It's just real simple. Kick the ball and go tackle the guy with the ball. Obviously, there's little, little nuances, but it's not like, there's not as many moving parts in special teams. So guys that are younger, who maybe aren't ready to play on offense or defense, they can play faster on special teams because they're really, really talented players. And sometimes what slows players down is all the nuances of college football. That's why you usually see guys with more experience 
play better with than just generally speaking, obviously better than guys with lesser experience because you know if you're if you're a linebacker, for instance, you can get shifts, you can get motions, there's all kinds of different formations, and then you mix those with all of our calls, and so it, it can be quite paralyzing for young guys, whereas special teams isn't that way. Uh, with that being said, I don't care if a guy's a five star, one star, first team, fifth team, I really don't. We're gonna play the very, very best guys. Um, that's what a good special teams culture does. So whether that's Micah Parsons or Brandon Smith or any of the other guys I can name, the best guys will play. Our policy here is that starters won't start on more than two. So if, if, if Micah Parsons is the starting linebacker, he won't be on more than two special teams unless it's approved by obviously Coach Franklin and then the offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator. Um, but to have the right culture, the right guys have to play. And you, they have to see that whoever it is, Whoever that guy is, you play him, and that it shows that it is important, and it's just as important as offense or defense. Because when you break it all down, that the impact on a game, it is. Hey, coach, how you doing? Hi. Yeah, uh, coach talked about out in uh, Chicago about Micah being the number two. How he always thought he was getting the ball, no matter where it was kicked. You know, he had a hard time not knowing it was not his ball to go and get. I'm just wondering, how are the discussions with him? Because he wants to do so much. And he, you know, how do those things go that you're trying to teach him? He is not the primary return. Well, I think I think uh, it's pretty obvious by, by where you line him up. You know, and, and there's different different variations of how to get him the ball. With for for me with kickoff return with with Micah, it's kind of a, a carrot to hang out there. He's going to do it the way that we want him to do it. Or just I'm talking it. about Micah. <laughs> um, but I, I, think, I, I think a lot of that is him joking around. You know, he he knows his role. And, uh, and, and I've shown them, one of the things we did at the last place I was at is we, we would move guys around, we would stack our returners a lot. We had a really dynamic returner that no one wanted to kick to, and so we had ways to move them around to get them the ball. Uh, I've shown the guys that on film, so I, I think he knows that, that he can be a great blocker, and he can also be a great returner and add, you know, have added equal value on both sides of it, and, and I think he buys into that. I think sometimes he's just messing.